This time we will learn the dissection of hand. Part one. Now know about the vessels of the buttocks.、Uh, they are located in the superficial fissures. They are very rich. They are divided into these three groups: anterior group, posterior group, and lateral group. Now, in the anterior group, we will look for these vessels and nerves. They are supraorbital artery vein nerve and supratrochlear nerve artery and vein. There are two groups. Medially is supratrochlear. Laterally is supraorbital. This side lateral group. It's divided into two parts, in front of the ear and behind the ear. In front of the ear, this group vessels they are superficial temporal artery and vein. The nerve is auricular temporal nerve. Here behind the ear, the vessels they are posterior auricular artery and vein. The nerve is here last. This one, lesser occipital nerve. All of them are in the superficial fissures by the scalp. Posterior group vessels they are occipital artery vein. Nerve is greater occipital nerve. Now this vertex is divided into two regions: frontal, parietal, occipital region. And temporal region. Look at this boundary is superior temporal line. Then this first region is one from the eyebrow to the superior nuchal lines and external occipital protuberance. Notice this muscle. The name is occipital frontalis. Look at this muscle. It has two bellies: frontal belly, occipital belly, one tendon. Its tendon's name, epicranial epineurosis. Then, look at the soft tissues of this region. Together, five layers: the first skin, second superficial fissure, the third epicranial epineurosis, the fourth sub. Epineurotic loose connective tissue, or another name, subepineurotic space. Then the last layer, pericranial. This is the outer memory of the spoon. And remember, these three hematoma. If the hematoma happen here, is subcutaneous hematoma. If happen here, this space. Maybe a big scale hematoma. This one is a subgaleal hematoma. If happen under the pericranium here, is subperiosteal hematoma. Okay, it's five layers. Then next we will view the video, dissection video. During the watching, you should grasp these points. First, notice how to. Use this surgical instrument, and next、um, about the method of peeling skin, then how to separate the vessels and the nerves, and、uh, know about these vessels, nerves, or tracts. Then next is the most important is to notice the character characters of these five layers of the frontal parietal occipital region.
the dissection of the vertex. This dissection is to expose the tissue above the orbit and above the zygomatic arch. It includes this region. What's this? This one is the frontal, parietal, occipital region, and the temporal region. Its boundary is the temporal line. For example, this is the epicranial apneurosis. This one is the Temporalis is muscle, and some vessels, for example, the supraorbital artery and the nerve. First, dissect the skin from the forehead to the external occipital protuberance. Now this transverse incident is from the uppermost point of the auricle to another side. The skin of the vertex is very thick and dense. It connects with the superficial fissure by some dense connective tissue. This superficial fissure is very rich in blood vessels and nerves. Here, to expose the supraorbital artery, wing, and nerve. Remember these names. This is the supraorbital artery, supraorbital wing, supraorbital nerve, medial to eight, supratrochlear artery. Supratrochlear nerve. Here is wing. In front of ear, we will look for another group vessels and nerve. They are superficial temporal artery wing and auricular temporal nerve. They are located in the superficial fissure. Look at this is enough. Auricular temporal nerve. Auricular temporal nerve is a branch from the mandibular nerve, from the trigeminal nerve. Here to look for the occipital artery, occipital wing. Usually, they are beside the external occipital protuberance, about 2 cm. Now, occipital artery is from the external cortical artery. Now, this nerve is greater occipital nerve, greater occipital nerve from C2. Remember the names of them. Then, behind the ear, to look for another group. This is the nerve, lesser occipital nerve, lesser occipital nerve from cervical plexus. And this artery, this artery is also from the external carotid artery. This is posterior auricular artery, posterior auricular artery. Then next in the vertex, open the superficial fissure.
持下麦克风。Superficial fissure. Here, this superficial fissure is tightly connected with the third layer. The third layer. Okay, here. This is superficial fissure. This is the skin. Here, this one is an epineurosis. Epicranial epineurosis. Epicranial epineurosis. These three layers, skin, superficial fissure, epicranial epineurosis, they are tightly connected together. So, they are called scalp. They are called scalp together. So, scalp means three layers. One, two, three. Now, next, open the epicranial Apneurosis. This is a tendon. Apneurosis means tendon, yes? A tendon of which muscle? Frontal occipitalis. Frontal occipitalis. Okay, notice this apneurosis. And what's this? This is pericranium. Pericranium. Between these two layers, look at these white color structures. They are loose connective tissue. Very loose. Now here, we also call it subapneurotic loose connective tissue. Or subapneurotic space. It means this apneurosis is very loose connected with the pericranium. This is the fourth layer of vertex. Fourth layer of vertex. So look at the blade, enter this space, just to the subapneurotic space. If the hematoma happens inside this space, which is called subgaleal hematoma, subgaleal hematoma. Very loose. The next, cut open pericranium. This is an outer membrane of the parietal bone. It's very thin, but it's dense. So, notice this one. Here is the bone. Here is the pericranium. We can see this pericranium is also loose connected with the bone. If the hematoma happens here, happen inside this space, we call it subperiosteal hematoma. Subperiosteal peritoma. But notice here, here is a suture. Now this side is a suture. So this membrane pericranium is connected with the suture. It's continuous inside the suture ligament. No. This side is the sagittal suture, sagittal suture. So this membrane 
is not continuous to another side. It's continuous inside the suture.